Now, is it time we stop glamorising drinking? The Belfast Telegraph editor, Gail Walker, in her column yesterday said people are guilty of turning a blind eye to problem drinkers by celebrating them as characters and hellraisers. She was writing about the troubled former England footballer, Kenny Sansom, after pictures of him sleeping in a park were published in a tabloid at the weekend. Samson's fall from grace after blowing his money on booze echoes the stories of many others, like our own George Best, Alex Higgins, the actor Oliver Reed. Uh, Paul Gascoigne's another example. Paul Gascoigne, by the way, is on uh, the Nolan Live TV show tonight, 10.45, BBC One, when he talks about his fight uh, against alcoholism and how he's fighting to stay alive. Uh, We'll play that uh, tonight. Let's just hear uh, a little snippet of the interview. Sometimes I think, I wonder if I could have a drink and have, be happy and have a laugh. Like I used to when I was younger, you know, having a few beers and having a laugh and get drunk and be all right. But it's not, it's like drink, drunk, and that's it. Poof. You know, and then it, it's the consequences. You know, I was looking for that laugh I used to have, you know, when I had a bevy. And it, it's not there anymore. You can uh, watch that interview, as I say, tonight, 10.45, BBC One. The journalist from Meredith is with us today. Uh, Morning to you, Fanola. Good morning, Stephen. You're a Belfast Telegraph columnist as well. The commentator, Mike Buchanan. Morning to you, Mike. Yes, good morning, Stephen. Good morning. Fanola, do we glamorise booze? I think we really do, and I think we have a particularly big problem with that in this country. Of course, it's not just confined to Northern Ireland. We've seen it happen in plenty of other places. But it's almost like we have a particular difficulty with this here, and it is about glamorising it. It's about um, sort of this kind of macho dimension to it, because it is, if you notice, mostly blokes. Now, that's not to say that there aren't female alcoholics, of course there are, but in terms of these public figures that we see who wreck their lives through booze, it is mostly well-known men. And alongside the sympathy that people would feel for something like that, there is a kind of admiration, and that's where I think it gets a bit messed up. Mike? I, I just don't agree. Um, I don't think the, the, the media glamorises alcoholic, alcoholic celebrities. I think the overwhelming emotion felt by the public over people like George Best, of course, Paul Gascoigne and Kenny Sampson is sadness. I mean, nobody takes up drink or drinks more because of stories of, al- of celebrity alcoholics. Well, I also think there's an extraordinary fascination with it. And again, I bring it back to Northern Ireland because I think we are particularly prone to this. Well, I mean, as, as a whole, Ireland has a problem with alcohol, certainly not confined to here. But there is something here that we... That's what I'm trying to get at here. It's more than just feeling sympathy for these characters. It's the admiration. It's like it is this idea of hellraisers, that they're sort of these kind of larger-than-life characters, that there's something to to sort of, I don't know, not admire perhaps, but there is a kind of just an extraordinary fascination with people like that. And, you know, it's a problem because you see it translated then into people drinking far too much themselves in, the, in their own lives and sort of re, you know, regaling their mates with how many pints they've had in a particular night. And, of course, the person who can really stomach the alcohol is the person who's like, oh, yeah, he's a real hard guy. And that is really messed up. I, th- I think, I think, you know, I think we need to ask ourselves, you know, why it is, why it is that so many, so, you know, so, so many people are, are heavy drinkers. I mean, certainly more than a, a generation or two ago. And I think it's clearly attributable to more people being unhappy even even depressed. Now, 30 years ago in the UK, the ratio of male suicides to female suicides was 1.7 to 1, and last year, by last year, it more than doubled to 3.5 to 1. So the, 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 suicide, the, male, the suicide differential had doubled in the course of a generation, but the state has no interest in the matter, and suicide is the number one cause of death of men under 50. And, 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 and you know, a, a good proportion of those I mean, I mean, I mean, and that's quite outside of the men who, who basically are drinking themselves to death, because I mean, those, those people will not be counted as suicides, but it, it is slow suicide. Yeah, and that that is a huge problem. But I, I keep coming back. I think you're you're turning, you're making it into a health thing, and it's much more than a health thing. It's a cultural thing that won't change until we stop admiring men for drinking pint after pint after pint. I don't think people do admire men who do that. I mean, oh, I think they do. I, In this country, they do. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I think I think we need to ask, you know, what, why, why it is that, you know, that, that perhaps men in particular are, are drinking so heavily. And a lot of that, I think, is down to the destruction of the nuclear family and all that flows from that, including the financial ruin of men in the, the divorce courts. And th- three quarters of divorces are filed for by women. And, far, I mean, uh, you know, some of the heaviest drinkers I've ever known have been fathers who denied access to their children after family breakdowns. 
And, You're moving uh, on to a very specific agenda here that's quite far well, from I'm, what we're I'm, talking about. No, no. I'm sure anyone who works with fathers seeking access to their children in the family courts will have known will have known quite a few alcoholics. Okay. Yeah, but and men drink for all men, kinds and, of reasons. And, 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 and some of those men kill themselves. Okay. Yeah, and that's awful. But, you know, there's a much wider problem here that we're talking about. And, you know, people become alcoholics for, for all kinds of reasons. Okay, 08459 Norman, morning, Norman. Morning, Stephen. Stephen. This country has a serious alcohol and drug problem, especially among young people. They're sitting in parks drinking and getting blitzed out of their minds. And I see people in supermarkets not carrying one bottle of wine out, six bottles at a time, cases of beer. And the government talks about clamping down on the alcohol problem here. They have done absolutely nothing to rein well, it. What do you want them to do? They could get the supermarkets to stop selling so much drink. One case is enough for anybody, but I see trolleys full of it. They need to clamp down on the cheap alcohol that supermarkets are selling, put the price up out of the reach of young people. Which is great for people like you that don't want to drink and not very good for the the vast amount of people who actually, they go out to work and they want to have a drink on their way home. They want to to bring a drink home or they... Stephen, I used to drink every Saturday, so I did. And I seen friends, 18 years of age, lying in the gutter with the rain pouring down on them, drunk. And that's what we're seeing today in the parks and on the streets. Young people aged 11 years of age, upwards drinking. Where's the parents? Why do the parents not tackle them? Because the parents have no control anymore over their kids, so they haven't. That's what the problem is. The kids rule the parents. So that they, and this country has a serious drink and drug problem. Okay. And All that's right. what leads to violence. Norman, so thank you. We're going to leave it there. Fanola and Mike, thank you very much. 08459 555.